Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're talking about mixing drums and taking it to the next level. When mixing acoustic drums, you're bound to run into microphone bleed. That's when the sound of one of the drums gets caught in one of the other microphones, most notably the snare drum picking up the bass drum, the toms hearing the snare, and really just kind of all of the shells being heard by all of the other shells. When you're tracking, mic placement is key to try and really reduce how much mic bleed you're getting from your other shells. But if you're just in the mixing stage, this is what you have. You have these multi-tracks. And sometimes we as engineers use samples to supplement our multi-track drums. When using samples and a sample replacer plugin, you might get some miss triggers. But Slate's Trigger 2 actually has a function built in that is really in the front, but nobody knows about it. It's called the suppression feature, and we're going to go over it today. So let's dive into the DAW. So here we are inside of the session, and I'm looking at the snare drum right now. And you can already see I'm getting some kick drum bleed on this snare side track right here. Now, like I said before, when you're tracking your drums, use mic placement to your advantage. Try and reduce as much mic bleed as you can. But when you're here and you're supplementing your drums with some samples, you'll want to avoid any miss triggers by any bleed. But you also don't want to miss any ghost notes by adjusting your levels into trigger. Why not just filter out all of the bleed and use a native function? Well. Let's take a look. Here's our snares as they are. So I'm going to interrupt myself because when I hit solo, I accidentally muted my mic for the remainder of the previous bits of this video. But this is too good to not share. So I'm just going to jump in and pick up where I left off. We need to listen to these drums and we're going to listen to this snare drum where there is some bleed. And then I'll show you how you can use the suppress function in trigger and how to do the routing so that the bleed will go through. But even with your detail all the way down, you can still just trigger your snare hits and not anything that's bleeding in. So let's take a listen to these drums. Okay, so here's our snare track in question. It's this guy right here. You can actually visibly see the bleed. All of these hits right here are other drums that are getting caught by this snare mic. And there's some spots in between our actual snare hits. When we listen without adding trigger or doing any suppression, it sounds like this. So we're getting some kick drum in there. You can hear the dum, 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 dum. And that is the bleed from our kick drum in here. Now, if I was gonna put trigger right on this snare track, as I have here, go in, and then if I turn the detail all the way down, I'm gonna get miss triggers, and it's not going to be sample replacement like we need in modern productions. There's gonna be miss triggers, and that's not going to help your productions. Take a look at what's going on. So as it was going through and it was looking at the input signal, there were some mishits in there. There was some bleed that was triggering snare samples from kick drums and that's not what we need. What we want to do is say, trigger, this is the stuff I don't want you to do. Now, yes, I have my detail all the way down, and I could refine this, and I probably will, but it's showing you that even with detail all the way down, if we use the suppression feature, we're going to negate any bleed. We're going to suppress that down so it doesn't trigger. And instead of doing it on the track itself, what you're gonna wanna do is create a send to an aux, a bus, whatever your DAW calls it. So I'm gonna turn off my plugin and I'm gonna turn on my send. Now, here's what you need to do. Right here is my brand new bus with trigger on it. I've created a send from my snare track and I've panned it all the way to the left. Then on anything you don't want triggering, anything you wanna suppress, any bleed that you're getting. 
figure out which drum it is, and then also sends that to the right side of trigger. So this is a stereo bus. The left side is our signal that we want trigger to replace. And the right side is everything we want to suppress. And for that, right now, is our kick drum. And so here is our send over here. And this is going into trigger. And it's panned all the way to the right. So when we open up trigger, our suppress knob is all the way down. And our detail is also all the way down. And now watch. When we play, I'm going to increase the suppress percentage. And you're going to see red sections in the user interface section here, and that's showing what notes are not going to trigger your samples. So even when we go over and increase the input volume, our suppression is saying, okay, well, clearly you don't want these things. Even with the volume turned way up and the detail all the way down where anything that's over the detailed threshold would have a sample inserted, we're not getting any from our bleed. You can do this with multiple things going in too. It doesn't just have to be the kick drum. If you're getting tom bleed in your snare mics, you can send the toms to the right side of the same bus, and it'll just be more signals that the suppression side will be listening to. And you can do all kinds of different routings like this in your productions. Whatever you want to actually trigger your samples, send it to the left side. Anything you want to suppress, send it to the right. And like we said, it can be multiple things going in. This is going to be a big game changer for those working in heavy metal or even jazz, something where there's lots of ghost notes, where you may want to actually just fatten up your sound with some samples, but you don't want to lose your ghost notes. You also don't want any mic bleed to create any kind of false triggers. I want to shout out my buddy Ryan Michael Harvey, who showed this to me, and now I get to share it with you guys. Thanks, bud. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com, and if you have a question, ask it in the comments, and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.